Does anybody know the blue zone studies? These are epidemiological studies where the regions were found out oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. where people just live really a lot longer than in other areas around. And a very famous ones is Loma Linda, California, the Adventists, a place in Costa Rica, Sardinia, and extremely famous is Okinawa in Japan, but they're passé. So if you look at their lifestyle, of course, it's not only diet. It's a combination of factors, physical activity in their daily life. They were not triathlon athletes, but they did gardening and went for walks. Now, they all had a moderate plant-based diet. Main protein source is pulses or legumes, not meat or dairy. Usually didn't smoke. They had good relationships and family work jobs. They had a, a more laid down life, balance between, thank you, relaxation and activity. They were not like hyper achievers. And uh, there was also like a, a more a deep, con um, what was also clear, I think it was like 97% of the people analyzed were belonging to some religion and actively practicing it. Uh, like Buddhism or no, different ones, Adventists, part of a religious community. And uh, a very important factor was a meaning of life. That was first shown by Viktor Frankl. You know, that you have a purpose of life is really essential for living. And if you lose your purpose, you can die really rapidly. That's behind you know, the, the, the man dies and the woman dies like, or the other way. It's usually the woman dies and the man follows very quickly. So purpose of life, very important. The Okinawas are very interesting for one point. They have been a phenomenon for the last millennium. There's a saying there, next to the point they're called the Isle of the Immortals. No, it's between China and Japan, more towards China. Uh, at 70, you're still a child. At 80, you're just a youth. And at 90, if the ancestors invite you into heaven, ask them to wait until you're 100. And then you might consider. Compare that to middle evil Europe. You know, if you're 35, you're an old man. So they, they really... Germans and Belgians haven't perfected the art of longevity. But cars. Well, not even that. Okay. Um, coming back. They know what they did. And it's been there for hundreds of years. They had the highest density of centenarians and super centenarians. That's what they usually ate. You know, not too much calories, complex carbohydrates, little fat, quite little protein. So little that the Americans starting a feeding program after which diabetes exploded. Um, Interesting, probably Belgium also, 18th century Germany and Belgium had a pretty similar distribution of macronutrients. And today we eat a lot less carbohydrates. We are low carb, but high sugar. 50% of our carbohydrates is sugar and the rest usually refined like white flour. So that's animal-based um, fat and protein. We eat a lot of fat and a lot more protein than we used to. So remember what Longo said, the real long living cultures are all high carb cultures. There's not one high protein, high fat culture which has achieved longevity, not one in the whole planet. So. Here you can see another proof of that. Here the Adventists are interesting because the, uh, the Okinawas are passé. They have, especially the men, they went down from top one in Japan to the bottom because they turned towards the Western American lifestyle. So they have now the same problems. Uh, number one now are the Adventists in Loma Linda. These are data from the 80s, and at that time they lived like 13 years longer, the vegetarian ones, than uh, uh, Californian and a lot longer than Germans. And um, what is really interesting is that men live almost as long as women. Normally there's a big difference between the two. So we can see men shorten their life by their lifestyle, not genetically. Uh, healthy living meant 
five, like uh, three or four times exercise per week, body mass index of maximum 25, some nuts every day, and uh, no smoking. That's it. And vegetarian. That make a big, big difference. The Adventists are half vegetarians, the rest is omnivores. And the omnivores are already a lot healthier than the Americans. That's why it's interesting studies, because they all know how to eat pretty healthy. It's part of their religion. So in the Adventist health study, too, they compared vegans with omnivore Adventists, and the vegans uh, weighed a lot less. The omnivores had a four times higher risk of diabetes than the vegans. And yeah, hypertension was, of course, a much lower. But interesting is both cancers, the women-specific and prostate cancer, were a lot lower in the vegan diet group. This is not automatic for any vegan diet, but they know pretty much what they do. That's the difference. No, not any vegan diet can do that. It has to be a healthy one, obviously. That's one of these guys, a quite famous cardiac surgeon. He worked until 95, has retired to his gardening now and still going strong. Um, he just really, like cutting people open, saw what was in there. You know, that's much of calcium and cholesterol and so on. And um, yeah, he changed his life and was healthy and kept working. So if we integrate all the biochemistry, the epidemiological, the clinical data, the best diets and their outcomes, and integrate it into a lifestyle model, that's more or less what I have tried to do in the Dr. Jacobs way. Obviously, eating is an important part. Relaxing is very important through deep breathing and deep sleeping. That's why these watches are actually quite you can monitor your sleep and um, yeah exercise with joy and not with uh, achievement like men often do so these are changes that are no magic bullets but they are like silent healers that work very effectively and what we do we we change the body chemistry in terms of pH and redox and also our hormone chemistry in terms of in insulin and many other hormones as well. There are three very simple basic rules. The, the first one is most often forgotten, especially in, in elder people, you know, drink, drink a lot, and not necessarily beer and cola, but healthy stuff. So the, the second one, well, you know, you have to be remain liquid in order to detoxify and you know, keep things moving. <laughs> It's extremely important. Come more to that. So second, you know, eat your fill of plant foods from all colors, so variegated diet. But, and that's the big but nowadays, observe your food intolerances. And there are more and more people. There are so many people who are on a very healthy diet and are miserable and look miserable because they may have uh, especially histamine intolerance or specific food allergies. So... That's number one and that's number two. And it's getting more and more important. So choose foods with high micronutrient density and low energy density, like vegetables, for instance, or yeah, tofu is another example. High potassium, potatoes, and low sodium. Um, you find in uh, these books, which they took away, oh, no. Well, it's there, and, and here you find um, a quite simple food pyramid, because nothing is forbidden in that food pyramid, but we give indication what is like still a tolerable or healthy amount of it. In that food pyramid, we look at the nutritional value, water, antioxidants, minerals, the influence on glucemic and insulin reaction, the potentially bad stuff in it, and all these health factors that are known there, and we organize it into like the plate you eat, and that's really important, the, the amounts you eat of what, that's what's going to matter. So basically, stuff your plate full with 70% of you know, vegetables, herbs, spices, berries, and stuff like that, drink a lot. 
And the rest of the plate, you know, you can choose from there, but mainly you should get these complex carbohydrates and uh, with plant proteins like quinoa or millet and so many things, whole grains, legumes, nuts. And you should usually cut back like on, on milk products, fish, which is very high in, in mercury and other stuff also. And uh, well, white flour, sugar, obviously. Really bad is fast food. Um, yeah, all that stuff that's so tasty. Uh, yeah, it shouldn't be, you know, it can be a treat on the top, but it's not the basis of your diet. Like my brother, when I met him last, I had for lunch like a, a huge cake. But he also looks like four times myself. It's, it's not the way to organize your plate, really. So the problem with this is it works well when you have enough time, but most people are so stressed out and so low energy that they really have a problem to have discipline with diet. So with other words, therapists, doctors, pharmacists, they will never go out of business because people will always fail to achieve living healthy lives, especially under stress. So for to help there, we have a very simple, effective, holistic approach. First of all, make sure that you know, the people supplement what is really missing. They often supplement so many things, you know, and have that superfood and that stuff and this cool thing, but they miss out on the basics like vitamin D, vitamin B12, iodine, selenium, and with most people, potassium, calcium, magnesium, zinc, omega-3 fatty. That's like really what's usually not there and often forgotten. Very essential. So on top, you can start optimizing and you, we have products for specific purposes with which you can do that. But beyond that, there's a third very important category. In order that we are compliant with a healthy diet, it needs to be fun. We have to like it. What we don't like, we don't keep doing until, you know, it's really life or death. So we have to combine some of health with enjoyment. And in that way, we can integrate it into the daily life and achieve long-term compliance with ourselves and with patients. So that's the only really effective prevention and therapy. So along with, you know, all that stuff, we always have a lot of material that helps people, uh, people to make holistic changes. I give you now examples of no solutions we have for our typical sins. Healthy coffees. Why is a doctor making a coffee? Well, everybody drinks it. Almost. It's the most sold drug on the planet. And uh, you can make it a lot healthier with G-Cafe. So what you do anyway every day, so a, a habit, we turn into something that really helps your health, as we show later on. Our alkaline formulas, well, yeah, they are, with them you can compensate some of the typical problems. You know, you, complement, you compensate the problem of the minerals and the acids. Very important after age of 50, uh, latest. We have you know, a lot of things that are healthy and you can add in your drinking so that you can drink more and it's no calories, but very healthy. So you, in order that we drink, a lot of people, it, it needs to be healthy, it needs to be tasty. Not everybody just drinks water. Um, Flavogino, that's a healthy chocolate or cacao drink I developed. It's like an NO booster, it lowers blood pressure. We have uh, an oil, which is really nice in taste and rich in algae based DHA and EPA. You can just add it to your food and get your required amounts. We have D3, K2 oils, which are just easy to use. Um, amino bars is a meal replacement. Pomegranate elixir, it tastes nice. It's a very good uh, supplement for many purposes. And it's easily integrated with many recipes. So we, we have hundreds of recipes that you can do and add on with our products. And in that way, get them implemented with yourself and with patients. 
And in that way, that's really the only thing that guarantees that people keep taking them, and that's really what keeps them healthy in the long run. Oops, what's that? Oh, yeah. Again, the, the coffee. Um, it's very rich in agacia fiber. So with three cups, you compensate the lack of fiber that most people have in their diet. The caffeine is to a big part from guarana, so it's like retarded coffee. It works gentler, more slowly. It brings more minerals that the caffeine excretes. Caffeine does excrete minerals, and in that way does cause a loss of bone mass. That's proven. Uh, so we add, and there's a lot of um, calcium also in the agacia fiber. They're plant extracts, and yeah, it's just really nice. And it really helps with the morning toilet, with the fiber and the coffee. So, And obstipation is really one of the big, big, big issues. Don't underestimate it. Now, the daily toilet is a luxury for many nowadays, but it's one basic pillar of health. And that's really helpful for that. It's like a uh, coffee bowel cleanse and much more effective than the normal one. Uh, that's my wife, by the way, uh, in Portugal. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of discussion, makes coffee acidic or not. Well, yeah, in a way it does. It, the pral value potential really, acid value is not acidic, but the caffeine effect makes it really acidic. That's why it's important to compensate this effect by the right minerals. That's a, a long-term study showing that, what I just claimed. Yeah, and uh, coffee is healthy. Well, coffee is also the biggest industry in the food world, so it's no wonder that there are more and more studies showing that it's so healthy. It reduces Alzheimer, Parkinson, liver cancer, asthma attacks, diabetes, so many things um, it's actually good for. Well, yeah, but you know, if, if you're not addicted yet, you don't have to get, it's not that healthy. So the agacia fiber is really interesting. It's a very good prebiotic. It, uh, especially a lot of butyrate is made. Yeah, obviously, beefy to bacteria, all that known stuff happens. But it contains a very interesting molecule, the abinogalactan, which is like anti-allergic, anti-inflammatory immune modulator. And in a, in a really very cost-effective way, you get a great plant immune modulator into your guts or the guts of your patients. And it's like a sur um, surfactant. It, it protects the mucosa. A new study shows it counteracts leaky gut. And by the protective effect, it's, um, that's why coffee is not irritating anymore to your gut. It's thanks to the agacia fiber, actually. Well, yeah, and clinical studies show it increases satiety and reduces abdominal fat if you take it long term. Yep. And more stool volume, medically speaking. Well, reishi uh, is another one you will enjoy it uh, in your break. Is the number one healing mushroom in uh, Chinese medicine. And very few know that it is a great adaptogenic like ginseng or rhodiola. And it's a very good natural antihistamine drug. Oh, no, mushroom, sorry. So there's a lot of it in the other coffee. It's, um, yeah, how to start practically. Um, I suggest you don't start or tell the patient to you know, stop eating everything, but to first uh, add good stuff so that he doesn't get that feeling, God, I'm starving, and you know, goes crazy. So there's so many things you can add to make the, you know, or change in the breakfast to make it more healthy and nice. Here's some examples. There are unlimited variety, and if you understand the whole thing as a culinary adventure, it's a lot more fun than if you see it as a deprivation, which is like in uh, the war generation in Germany, you can't take the butter off their bread. The same is probably in Belgium. It's like they get an existential crisis. 
Yeah, that's a really important one. You have to get her on board, but usually the wife gets you on board anyway. So it's a, a family thing, and the whole family will profit a lot. That's um, a colleague of mine, a typical, you know, hypertensive, poorly neuropathy, three kinds of blood pressure lowering medicine. So he read the book, and like he's a military doctor, like chief military doctor in Koblenz. He really put it in discipline into action and blood pressure normalized and no medications anymore. And he had a uh, carotis plug that disappeared. He also took Alexia plus the eating plan. And the intima media thickness reduced a lot. So this is one of many examples how it works. Um, I would say we make a little... Um, when is the, the big break? At four. Maybe, um, maybe you make a little break now. F five minutes. Then we go on to the, to the next part.